بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد. It's important for us during this holy month of Ramadan and other than this holy month of Ramadan to take care of our hearts, to do those things which will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those things which will help our iman to increase and avoid those things which will make our hearts sick and will decrease our iman. And all of this revolves around the importance of taking care of your heart. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, أَلَا وَإِنَّ فِي الْجِزِدِ مُضْغَةً إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَ جِزِدَ كُلُّهُ وَإِذَا فَسَدَ فَسَدَ جِزِدَ كُلُّهُ أَلَا وَهِيَ قَلْبُ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said in a hadith mutafiq on alayhi, at the end of the hadith he said, after describing the state of the heart, he said, and verily in the body is a morsel of flesh. And if it is healthy, the whole body is healthy. And if it is sick, the whole body is sick. Verily it's the heart. From this hadith, we gain so many benefits. And it's a reminder for us to take care of our heart. Because if a person's heart is clean, then their whole body will be clean. So the heart that is, that is filled with Iman, then their limbs will reflect that. And their outward actions and deeds will reflect that Iman, that faith, that strong Iman. Because the tongue, our speech, and our actions, they're all a part of Iman and what's contained in the heart. This differs with some of the other religions which claim or for them that Iman or faith is just a matter of the heart. And this differs with the sect, the Murjia, and those people who resemble them that believe that Iman is only a matter of the heart. That you can say anything and you can do anything and it doesn't shake a person's faith. Nor does it fluctuate. Nor does it go up, nor does it go down. A person's Iman is constant and that a person cannot leave the fold of Islam except unless they totally disbelieve in their heart. This is some of what some of the Murjia sect believe. But this is against Islam and against what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us and that we learn from this hadith and the many other hadith a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which illustrate for us that our Iman it increases and we need soul food we need those things which are going to feed our soul those things which are going to make our Iman go up by making uh, you know making a lot of prayer supplicating to Allah often and very importantly, making dhikr in its various forms. To remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reflect on His creation, uh, recite His divine names and attributes. Uh, all the various forms of dhikr or remembrance that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, taught us, taught us in his authentic sunnah by saying, La ilaha illallah. وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَا لَا الْمُوْقُ لَا الْحَمُّهُ عَلَى كُلِ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ Or just saying لَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهِ Or just saying سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ وَاللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ All of these are forms of dhikr. These are all ways in which we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all ways in which we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and supplicating to Him often سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى These things will help us increase our iman. They will help our iman, our faith go up. And of course, what is the a'lam of dhikr? What is the most, the highest form of dhikr? That's going to the kitabillah, going to the Qur'an, going to the Qur'an and reciting the Qur'an of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reciting His divine speech. This will help our iman increase. This is what we're all in need of. We're in need of our faith going up, not going down. However, it's imperative for us to realize that faith does sometimes go down. Sometimes your mood changes. Sometimes your Iman goes down. Sometimes you encounter things that test you and you may or may not pass that test. 
Sometimes you fall into sins. Sometimes you willingly do disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of these are ways that decrease your iman. They make your iman go down. And so we have to strive to have a healthy heart. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, وَإِنَّ فِي الْجِزِدِ مُضْغَةٍ إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَتْ جِزِدَ كُلُّهُ He said, and verily, in the body is a mortal of, morsel of flesh. And it is, if it is healthy, then the whole body is healthy. That's, that's what we want. We want our, 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 our hearts to be healthy and our outward appearance to be healthy. It's not sufficient for us as men, for example, to grow the beard, uh, which is from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ ordered that. That's an act of thought. That's an act of obedience to Allah. The person who shaves their beard according to the, the consensus of the ulama, that the person who shaves their beard off, this person is a facet. This person is, is doing open, uh, 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 an open wicked sin. They, because it's, it's as if they're advertising. They're saying, yeah, I know the Prophet ﷺ ordered it, said, uh, uh, grow your beard and trim your mustache. He ordered it. It's a command from the Prophet ﷺ, and there's many other hadith to substantiate that. He ordered us to do this. But the person who is shaving it openly and walking around with the baby face, then this person is openly disobeying the Prophet ﷺ as if to say that he is a new way, or if to say he doesn't really care or if to say, well, it's not important, but the Prophet ﷺ ordered you to do that. So then that is a way of outward obedience, which reflects upon your, your inward uh, iman. It reflects because it's a part of iman. So don't think that just the heart counts, but of course it's the outward appearance as well. The outward appearance is a part of iman, your deeds. Your deeds, what, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always tell us? What does he tell us in Surah Al-Asr? Wa al-Asr inna l-insana lafi khusr. All of mankind is in the loss. Illa al-ladina amanu. Except those who believe. Wa amanu salihat. And they do righteous deeds. So that lets us know that, that iman, that we have to believe in Allah, we have to believe in all those things, the six pillars of iman, and all the things the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with, and all the things that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala told us in the Quran. And... We have to do righteous deeds. وَعَمَلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And they do righteous deeds. وَتَوَاسُوا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسُوا بِالصَّبْرِ And they call to the good. And they call to be patient. These are all a part of our iman and all a part of those things. So the, the shahid here, or the point that I want to emphasize, is that take care of the heart. Take care of that iman. And do not forget your outward appearance. Do not forget that you will be rewarded when you try to uh, follow the example of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in dress in uh, all of the, his, his actions Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he was sent as a rahmah for all of mankind Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so this is very important for us to remember and to take care of our hearts the heart as many of the scholars like Ibn Al-Qayyum uh, Imam uh, Al-Ghazali and, and many others described the heart and divided the heart into three categories especially this is uh, known from Ibn al-Qayyim he divided the, the heart into three types and we're just going to talk very briefly about because this is a part of our series of Iman boosters for this Ramadan so he divided the heart into three types he said Qalb Salim the healthy heart Qalb Mate the dead heart Wa Qalb Marid and the sick heart. And may Allah protect us from having a sick heart and a dead heart and bless us with the healthy heart. First, beginning with the uh, the healthy heart. The healthy heart, it is the heart that encourages you and is inclined towards, those, toward, towards the day of judgment, meaning to the hereafter, to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to see your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala that th this heart is, 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 is a clean heart as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعَ مَالْ وَلَا بُنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran 
He says the day when your wealth or when one's wealth and their sons, because those things we covet in this life so much. We, we covet children. We covet wealth. We covet uh, many other things in, in this, uh, and, and Nisa, and women for the men, and, and so forth. We, we desire these things. We love these things. These are a part of our status for in many cultures. And this is the day. The day of judgment will be the day when none of that's going to uh, benefit a person. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Illa man atta allaha bi qalbin salim. That except the one who meets Allah, who comes to Allah with a clean heart. So that shows us the people of clean heart, they're the ones who are looking forward to seeing their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. And, and uh, that this life, they realize this life is temporary. And they're striving for the hereafter. They're not striving to accumulate wealth and and the other trappings of this life but rather they're using this life as a means to get them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the clean and healthy heart it is a heart that which of course is the opposite of a sick and weak heart but it's the heart that also uh, avoids the wicked desires you know the lower desires that are going to take them away that doesn't mean that a, the, the healthy heart doesn't have uh, healthy relations in, in, with their family. But rather, that it doesn't go beyond the bounds. A healthy heart is the heart that fears Allah, that wants to be away from wickedness, that wants to, that is following, that is inclined to follow the uh, sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu You can never get away from the sunnah. Never think that the sunnah is a cliche. Never fail to realize that the only way you're going to paradise, the only way your deeds are going to be accepted, your good deeds, of course, is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it's that you have uh, ikhlas, you have sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your heart and in your actions and in your statements, that you're worshiping Allah alone, attributing no partners to Him. And secondly, that you're following the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So remember that part of uh, of of having a clean heart is following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and be inclined towards that. When you hear something about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you read something about the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how he was, how his companions were, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, then this should encourage you, strengthen your iman. And you should be you should want to be like him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you should love him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and you should follow his his commands. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is the healthy heart. And the healthy heart is full of fear. And it's full full of it, it, it's full of love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it fears his punishment. And it, it desires to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to see him on the day of judgment. And it also desires to make toba, to make repentance, and it feels sorrow for the sins that uh, are committed, and it has hope. That its deeds, that the deeds of the limbs will be accepted, and that it will not be held accountable. This is what the healthy heart is doing, and that it is sincere to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That everything that that we are doing is is for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It's ikhlas lillah Subhanahu. May Allah bless us with ikhlas. Razakana wa iyaqum bil ikhlas lillah Subhanahu wa Taala. And the healthy heart also in relation to al-wala wal-bara, meaning loving for the sake of Allah and hating for the sake of Allah. The healthy heart, it loves. It is inclined to loving those things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and hating those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates and detests. Moving on to the next heart, the next type of qalb. Qalb al-qalb al-mayt. The dead heart. The dead heart is the heart of the disbeliever and the heart of the hypocrite. Because this is the heart where the desires are totally in control. And that this individual doesn't even know what good is, can't distinguish between good and evil. And this individual is a person who 
possibly worships their desires. And how many individuals have we met who say they don't believe in God and they just go with what they can see, what they detect through their senses, through their limited senses, their limited sense of, uh, of sense. And mostly what you find in most individuals, in my personal experience, the individuals that I have met that say they don't believe in God or, or even old companions of mine, that they almost always they use their intellect and they use their heart to make their judgments in everything in accordance with their limited understanding. So, for example, if it feels good, I'll do it. If it tastes good, I'll eat it. If it smells good, I'll enjoy it. And they go and they indulge. So then they follow their desires. They get trapped into just following their desires. Some to such an extent they worship their desires. How many individuals, look, look at the increase in evil that we have in this day and age. And the Prophet ﷺ warned us about that. That time would get worse and worse. And how much do we, look at, look at what we see that's going on in the world. Do you think these people have living hearts, the people who go into movie theaters and shoot up people? Or the people who go in and blow up massage kill people in mosque while they're praying? Or the people who uh, kill uh, women and children, or the serial rapists and the serial killers? And, 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 and these people uh, kill you because of your color, and these ones kill you because of your nationality? These people have sick hearts. Matter of fact, not just sick hearts, they have dead hearts, many of them. Some of them, they're dead. They're not dead physically yet, but a lot of times you can even detect it in, even by looking at individuals like this. When a person doesn't believe in God at all, a, more often than not, you'll even see like a type of evil that emanates from them because they, their desires is their God, as Allah mentions in the Quran. So as we see, there is an increase in evil and there's an increase in individuals with the dead heart. The dead heart doesn't want to hear good. The dead heart wants to be away from good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah about the hypocrites and those people whose heart is sealed. Qala subhana, inna ladheena, inna ladheena kafuru sawa'un alayhim anzartum am lam tundurhum la yu'minun. Khatam Allahu ala kulubihim wa ala sami'ihim wa ala absarihim ghishawa. Walahum adabun azim. Walahum adabun alim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, he says, Inna ladina kafiru, verily those who disbelieve. Sowa, sowa unarehim andartum em lam tundurum. Regardless of whether you warned them and gave them the truth or didn't give them the truth. La yu'minun, they won't believe regardless. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us why. It's because of their arrogance, it's because of the, they have a dead heart. And then Allah increases them in their evil. He allows them to be in their evil and increases them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَخَتَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَى قُلُوبِهِمْ And Allah seals their hearts. Their heart is sealed. Allah also mentions, also in Surah Al-Baqarah, about how their hearts are like a, a, a hajr, a rock. And if you were to pour water on it, it, it just splashes. It has no effect. It doesn't, you know, this, this is almost like, this is like a similitude for us of guidance. So if you give this heart guidance, it rejects it totally. It's, it's, and we can relate to this. Those people in the medical field and those people who know about the sicknesses and the illnesses and the diseases and the things we put in our body. And that's why I mentioned that it's soul food. When we put good in our body, that feeds our soul with khayr. This is what the, the healthy heart is inclined to. They, it, it accepts the soul food. It accepts the good food. It accepts the Quran. It accepts the sunnah. It accepts all of those things and the dhikr and stuff. And, it, and, and it's immersed in that. So it's just healthy. It's bubbling with life. As if your, your blood is pumping to all your limbs perfectly and your colon is clean and everything is working in accordance. This is what the healthy physical body is like when they're eating right. When they're taking care of themselves physically. And so the similitude is with the, the hearts. And the sick heart does not accept. The sick heart is like the sick body. The sick body that, that can only function with Pepsi. That can only function with McDonald's. That only function with these fast food and all the candies and, and all these uh, different sugars and, and poisons, in fact. And you see a different. You see the, the effect upon the body and the effect upon the mind.
and the effect upon the heart. Actually, they're all interrelated. As the Prophet ﷺ even told us in, the, in that very hadith we read, He said that if the heart is, is healthy, then the whole body is healthy. And if the whole body is healthy, uh, if the heart is sick, the whole body is sick. And then moving on to the last type of heart, Al-Qalb Al-Marid, the sick heart. The sick heart is the heart that it has weakness, it's daif, that it, is, it, it, has, it contains both good and evil. It's sick. So meaning that it's inclined towards good, but it's also inclined towards evil. This individual prays. They supplicate to Allah. They remember Allah sometimes. But then other times they're involved so much in the worldly life and they do haram. They do haram sins and they do this. So they're almost in between both uh, sins. We all have sins. As the Prophet ﷺ said, Kullu ibn Adam khatta wa khayran khatayina tawabun. All the children of Adam, alayhi salatu wasalam, they have sins. And the best of those who sin is those who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the uh, the sick heart, it has life and it has weakness or sickness. And sometimes the goodness overtakes it and it's doing more good deeds. This individual is doing more. Maybe they're fasting in Ramadan. They're doing a lot of good deeds and so forth. But then at other times they just totally forget. Or maybe in the night of Ramadan they watch movies all night and they watch the bad things and they listen to music or whatever. So that is the case of the sick heart. The sick heart is inclined towards good and evil. And sometimes the good take over, uh, precedes the evil, and sometimes the evil precedes the good in this heart. This heart also can be, become tainted with things like uh, loving their desires. So loving to look at the haram maybe. Loving to follow and do the haram things. Loving to eat and drink the haram things. Loving to buy the haram things, so spending uh, in their wealth in, a, in an unlawful fashion. This heart also spins, is affected by the, those sicknesses, and at the same time is haris. It is uh, inclined and is striving to uh, attain evil at times, striving to do the bad, striving to to gain the evil things that it wants to attain. And this heart also can be tainted with hasid, with envy. You know, you see someone else benefiting and they're doing good, they have a nice car, he's a beautiful wife, he is this, he is this. And this individual who has a sick heart is jealous. Not je just jealous, but envious. Meaning that they want to take that ni'mah from that person. They want the person to be divorced from their wife, maybe so they can marry her or whatever the situation. They just want to make sure that they don't have the good. Or they want to see that individual fall. They want to see, oh man, why is he so famous? Why does he or she have so much money? Why do they have a house bigger than mine? Why do they have a bigger white picket fence than my picket fence? Why is their uh, car bigger than mine? And they want to see that ni'mah taken away from them. That's hasid. But it's permissible to have a type of jealousy when somebody is a person of good. Meaning that you don't want to take their goodness, but you want some of that good. Man, I wish I had money to spend in charity like him. Wow, I wish I had um, uh, as much knowledge as he does, and maybe I could share that knowledge with the people and help them be guided, because I want the edger from Allah. That's okay. You don't want to take away their na'ma, but you want to be like them in that khair. You want to have some of the khair like that. That's permissible. What's impermissible is one is as hasid, is envy and hating and hating them to have good and wanting to take away their good or, or whatever it is they have. So this is what the sick heart also is, is tainted with this as well. The sick heart also is fascinated by itself, you know, uh, is, is impressed with their, with their own deeds, is a person who's like, oh, wow, I did so good. I'm so good looking. I'm so, I have so much money. My cars are so great. I have so many of this. I have so much of this. I'm so much like this. You know, they're pleased and impressed with themselves. And so that's why that's a serious thing. 
We all have to be cautious of that. The shaitan is haris. He's going to be on you in every single way he can he can get to you and distort uh, those things, dis distort your own image of yourself and make you seem impressive. You could start out having sincerity to Allah, giving the people a lecture about Islam, about the love of Allah. Your lecture is solely for the sake of Allah. And you're telling the people, then the shaitan is whispering. Then your own intention changes and you become impressed with yourself. Wow, I delivered that great. Wow, the people were really impressed. Wow, the sisters lined up back there. Wow, that it, whatever the case is, wow, they're going to give me money for lectures. May Allah protect us from all of that. And so this is the importance to be cautious of this thing. The sick heart also has arrogance. Kibber. It can also be tainted with kibber, with arrogance. You know, thinking that they're better than this one. Oh, I'm better than him because I'm black. I'm better than him because I'm white. I'm better because I'm Chinese. I'm better because I speak this many languages. You know, an arrogant or, you know, someone humble approaches you. Oh, can I? Huh, you're beneath me. This is what the sick heart. Beware this, O Muslim. The sick heart also can be tainted with love for position and status and a love for evil and wickedness in the earth meaning to spread evil so the sick heart can be inclined towards spreading evil like hey i want to see uh you know just think about the internet you can put good out there that will last for a long time or you can put evil out there that'll last for the people will put pornography and put a uh, thing about killing and 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 and, and things that are not beneficial They've done a sunnah say. They've done an evil sunnah, which has nothing to do with the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. but this is the, the general meaning of sunnah, that they have done a way, or they have left something that will remain for a, a long time, that misguides people constantly. Think about the individual who, who uh, because we know that pornography, for example, is the most popular thing, uh, probably from websites that you'll, you'll find. And every second, maybe thousands of new sites come up. The person who, who makes that site, just think how many hits they get per day. How many individuals are, are, are wanting, inclined towards misguidance and they help them. Yeah, come and get misguidance. And then on top of that, they're getting sins. They're getting a share in those sins from all those people. But the person who leaves a website of good and guidance and ilm wa fiqh, fiqh fi deen Allah, that gives the, inclines the people towards the good of the religion of Islam. This person is getting a share of khair. Every time someone goes there and it gets some guidance, they're getting some khair. May Allah bless us with that, that khair. Also, uh, so, and, and, and the person who is inclined to love that facade is spread. For example, this is very important related to dawah, that sometimes brothers and sisters, they, they, they've gotten a sickness in their heart and they want to see the downfall of someone who's calling to Allah. For example, this one's a sheikh. This one's a talib al-ilm. This one's a da'i al-Allah. They're calling to Allah. But another person out of hasid, they want to bring them down. They look for their mistakes. They go through all their tapes meticulously to find mistakes. They can't find it easy, so they got to go meticulous. They got to dig in there just to bring that individual down. Now, if that person is a person of the sunnah, just think of what kind of sin they're going to get for trying to bring them down. Because if they're a person of the sunnah, in fact, they're one of the awliya of Allah. They're one of the people Allah loves because they're practicing the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and calling to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we have to be cautious. Be cautious of, of envy. Be cautious of wanting to spread wickedness or wanting to spread the faults of others. Oh, sister so-and-so, she always does this. You know, spread it on. Uh, brother so-and-so is doing this. Oh, I just heard so-and-so is doing this. Oh, man, spread it. This kind of thing is the people Allah explains about them in Surah Al-Baqarah. Yufsiduna fil ard. They, 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 they spread evilness in the earth. And they want to see, they're happy with spreading evil in the earth. That's a sign of the hypocrites. May Allah protect us from it. And then there are those who they contain any uh, and many other things that we have to be aware of. So those are just some of the ways in which a sick heart uh, that we have, and that uh, some of the characteristics of a sick heart, and that we have to be careful of that. And we will try in the next lesson to speak a little bit more about the heart and how the shaitan comes to the heart. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept this good and forgive our evil and protect us from anything and all harm and bless us 
this holy month of Ramadan, and other than this holy month of Ramadan, and may Allah bless us with Jannah to Firdaus. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.